What's up everyone, it's Patrick from Purple Park Studios. Today we're going to model this pair of glasses that you see here. Uh, so let's just get started. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to scroll out here and hit Shift A. I'm going to add in a circle and I'm going to change it to 64 verts. And then I'm going to hit R, X, and 90. And then I'm going to real quick just scale it down to the right scale here. I'll hit 1 to go into front view. And then G, I'm just going to move that into position here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my glasses and hit X to delete everything there. And I'm also going to delete these screws that I had here. So now I hit uh, Tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to hit 1 for vertice mode. And the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit E and Y. And I'm just going to extrude a little bit back on the Y axis there. And I'm going to hit 3 or A to select everything. Alt E and extrude faces along normal. And I'm holding down shift. I'm just going to extrude inward just a little bit like that. Tiny bit for the frame there. I'm going to hit Control R to put a loop cut on the top here. And I'm going to hit Control R inside. Put a loop cut in there as well. And then I'm going to hit 1 to go back into vertice mode there. So we have this, uh, I guess the frame of the glasses are going to be like Kind of like some Harry Potter glasses, I guess you could say. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to hit F to fill, and that's going to be our glass there. And then I'm going to right click and shade smooth and just go down here to this little box and under normals, I'm going to hit auto smooth. And we're going to fix this, uh, how the edges look so sharp, we're going to fix that later, but for now we'll just get the modeling done. So I'm going to go back into edit mode here, I'm going to hit, go into my uh, left mode here, three for face select mode and here's the origin point here I'm gonna select these top four faces uh, just above the origin point hit one to go into front mode I'm gonna hit E and X I just extrude out there on the X and then I'm gonna hit S Z or I'm sorry S X and zero to flatten it out there and then I'm gonna hit X and I'm gonna delete these faces that are right here and uh, that's important because later we're going to mirror this and join the mesh together and it will be important that those faces have been deleted. Alright, so what we can do next is we can go around here to the side and I'm going to go into face select mode and I'm going to hit 3 to go into side mode here and these four faces right here at the origin point in the middle here, these four faces here, I'm going to grab those, hit 1 to go into front mode, E and X, and I'm just going to extrude out just a little bit there, like that. And then I'm going to go grab these faces on the, uh, this is the back side of the glasses. On the back side, we'll grab these two faces. I'm going to hit I for inset and just inset them a little bit. And then S and Z to scale down on the Z just a bit there. I'm going into side mode. I'm going to hit E and Y and just extrude out to about what I think the length of these glasses, uh, the uh, whatever they are, whatever, whatever that goes out to. So then I'm going to just go back and hit 3 to go into side mode there. I'm going to hit E and R and G to just pull that down a bit like that. And then I'm going to scale that out just a bit. Maybe G to pull that out a little more. R to rotate that. Maybe scale it in just a little bit there. So you should have something like this. And we can actually hit uh, S and X and just scale it out a little on the X if you'd like as well. So we have a good part of these glasses done here. Uh, what we need to do is hit 1 to go into front mode. And then I'm going to add a mirror modifier. And we're going to change it from the X to the Y. Or you know what, first what we need to do is we need to right click and hit set origin to 3D cursor. And then we'll go and add our mirror modifier. And uh, we can leave it mirrored on the X there. Um, we'll just, uh, what we'll do next is we're going to actually apply this mirror modifier. And then go into edit mode and hit 2 for edge select mode. And just holding down alt, we'll select this edge loop here. By just clicking on an edge while holding down alt, holding shift, and then alt, select this other edge. And then we'll right click and we'll hit bridge edge loops. And then you can select everything. We'll hit 1 for vertice mode and then M, and it will merge everything by distance. 
and uh, everything's been merged there. If you wanted to, you could merge all these vertices here. Um, I'm actually going to not do that. I'm going to grab these and just pull the, them up just a little bit like that. And maybe even just, um, actually, I think this hit one going to front mode, and then grab x-ray mode up here. We'll grab all of these points here, and we're just going to move them all up a little bit and then out just a little bit like that. And then what we can do here is we can uh, grab our mesh and we'll add a subdivision surface modifier and change the levels view to two. And I'm going to just leave the render on two. You can change it to three if you want, but I think two is just fine. And then I'm going to add another modifier. It's going to be a bevel modifier. And I'm going to change the segments to four. And that takes care of uh, some of these harsh, harsh edges here. So there's a couple things we need to fix here. Uh, first, we might as well save. And uh, we need to like, I want these to be almost appear to be separate parts. So I'm going to click this here. So what we can do is uh, we can hit Control R to add in. Well, first, what we can do to make our life a little easier, we'll go back into front view here and hit Control R. We're going to add a loop cut right down the center there. We can go into X-ray mode here and just select half of these vertices, X, and delete them. And then once again, we can add a mirror modifier in and we'll just make sure that the mirror modifier is at the top of our modifier stack so we'll drag it up and just check clipping and now now we should be in good shape here so we can go back into edit mode hit control r i'm going to add a loop cut i'm going to scale it down and then i'm just going to push it in like that scale scale it down even a bit more here hit control r and this one I'm just going to pull out like that and scale it down like so. That way it looks like the uh, glasses are almost two parts, like uh, the frame is separate from the rest of it. And we're going to do the same here. We're going to give it one of those, uh, whatever you call it, on the end of a glasses. Double tap G for uh, to move this loop here. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to scale this down. Sorry, actually, I'll add another loop cut here. Add one more in the middle here. We'll scale that one down, or up actually, rather. And then we'll grab, hit two for edge select mode, holding down alt, grab this loop here, scale it down. Just push it into the mesh like that, scaling down a bit more if you need to. You can always grab this top loop again, pull that out, and scale that down as well. Just make sure that the it's not intersecting with any of the other mesh. So something like that's not too bad, actually like that. And if you uh, if you have this like pinching here in the middle, it's probably when we were like messing with uh, the points here, and then we added that second mirror modifier, which could you may be experiencing this issue. And if it's bugging you, you can just go ahead and apply your mirror modifier, tap into edit mode, and with these uh, all of these points here selected, you can just hit X and you can delete those. Tap two to go into edge mode, and you can hold down Alt, select that loop there, and Shift Alt. Select this loop, oops, sorry, select this loop here, right click and just hit bridge edge loops. And then if you go out of edit mode, it just looks a little bit cleaner. So I think I'm gonna go with this. Um, and if you did wanna have that bevel, you could just hit control R in the center there. Um, and then you could still move that out and up like we did before, uh, if you want. So just a note. So now we can move on to the uh, texturing. All right, so I'm here in the shader editor. I'm just going to hit this arrow and turn down the world opacity. Um, and we're going to start uh, shading this thing. So let's just create a new material, and we're going to call this one uh, just frame. And uh, what we can do here is we can just go ahead and kind of make this whatever color you want. I'm going to go with like a brownish color, dark brown, uh, just to start out there. And we can go ahead and we're going to go down and add in a bump node by hitting Shift A. Just type in bump and plug the normal into the normal. And then we're going to go Shift A and add a, a Voronoi texture. And we're going to plug the color into the height. And uh, what we can do here now is we can just scale all this up. Scaled up pretty high here. 
I'm gonna make this kind of like a fake, um, like a, almost like a fake wood look. I'm gonna change this from change this to uh, Minowski. That we can start playing with the strength here. Strength something like uh, I think 0.32 looks decent, or maybe you can just make that like go with 0.4. Um, you can also play with the random value here. I'm just going to keep it all the way up. Something like that's not too bad. And then we can go tap into edit mode and just face select these two here. Go to our materials tab, hit new, and call this glass. Hit enter and then make sure you hit assign and that'll turn those white. And now we can uh, get rid of this principal shader here. Just hit Shift A, and we'll add in a glass shader. And just plug this into the surface. And I'm going to make the roughness like 0.4, or uh, maybe like 0 0.2, 0 0.3. 0.3 is nice. I like that. And the one thing you want to do, it's important. Uh, go down here, over to here under your shading, under the shading tab here, and change the blend mode to alpha blend. And the shadow mode to alpha hashed and uh, what that'll do is it'll allow you if you well first we have to add in a transparent node shift a it'll allow for the transparency essentially and so we'll just move this over here and shift a to add in a mix shader drop that right in there and we'll just plug this into the shader and now you're able to see through the glass like that and uh, save this here. So hit Shift A and let's add in a bump node. Plug the bump into the normal of our glass shader. And then I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to add in a noise texture. And I'm going to plug the color into the height. And then I'm also going to add in a color ramp. And I'm going to drop that in between the two. So you get something like this, which isn't quite what we're going for. Um, so we can just dial back on this color ramp here. Maybe we'll go the opposite way here. And then what we're going to do is I'll just select my noise texture and I'm going to hit Control T. And if you don't have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can do so by going up to Edit. Once my computer stops freezing up here, you can go up to Edit preferences and then under add-ons you can just type in node wrangler and make sure it's checked and then you should be good so and that will just if we change it from object to vector it's going to evenly spread the noise texture out over our the area of our material if that makes sense something like that and now we can go ahead and start playing with the scale I'm just going to make some you know, because glasses aren't perfectly clean. They have a lot of, like, dirt and stuff on them. Um, and we can ch make this a little more realistic by just playing with the strength, turning the strength back a bit. Something like that. We can turn the scale up or down. I'm sorry. A bit more. So the next thing we need to do here is... Um, we can actually, I didn't do this for the first pair of glasses, uh, but we can do it for this pair. Let's uh, let's give this a different material. So we can just hit three to go into face select mode, holding down alt and then shift and alt. We can select these uh, sides here. We can do the same for this side over here. And then I'm just gonna hit uh, new, this plus icon up here, new, and we'll just call this uh, frame two. And I'll hit assign. And we're going to make this a uh, different color here. I think that'll be cool. Let's make this like, try a black or something. Maybe like a gray. Maybe we can try making this metallic to see how it's going to look. Play with the roughness here. Something like that. Maybe I'll go like 0.4. I'm just kind of experimenting at this point here. Um, 
and we, we're going to want to change uh, this endpoint here as well. So we can use the same method, holding down uh, Alt, select the first face loop or the first edge loop, and then holding down Shift and Alt, we can select the rest of these faces. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to assign these to the uh, silver material that we made. And we can go ahead and give this, uh, add a bump node to this uh, material here. Bump node. All right, Shift A. We'll add in a noise texture. Plug that into the height. And just turn the strength back and the scale up. Turn the strength way back on this one here. So it kind of gives it a little bit of a rough faded look there. We can play with the color then in a bit here as well. And also play with the roughness value here. We turn the detail up to like six. Something like that. We'll zoom in so we can really see what's happening here. So that's kind of nice. Um, you might just want to make this a bit darker. Or perhaps the answer is just changing the frame from this brown look to a different color. And maybe we want to make the ends of these uh, actually that color as well. And so really, I mean, you could spend uh, you could spend as much time as you want really tweaking all these settings and the colors and, you know, getting different results out of playing with the textures. Um, but I think, you know, no one wants to sit here and watch me do that for hours, uh, which I definitely do sometimes. So I think you get the point as far as modeling these glasses uh, and texturing them. There is one last step we can do to add a little bit of realism to these glasses. Uh, if we go back into our layout here, we can hit Shift A and go to mesh and then you can add in bolt and if you don't have the uh, bolt add-on enabled this is like huge right now because this for some reason these aren't really uh, built to scale but you can change it to uh, go from none you can go to Phillips here there's a whole bunch of options and you can just scale it way down way down because it's definitely not that's a bolt is definitely not that big um, and then you can hit R X and 90 oh, I'm sorry control Z that R Y and 90 well wow, it's the first time I said control Z in this tutorial G and X to move it out, scale it down. And I think the add-on um, edit preferences, I think it's just, is it Bolt? Yep, Bolt Factory right there. It's a free add-on. You can just enable that. Um, you should have that. But what I did was uh, just hit G and, sorry, G and Z. And I just added in, uh, scale these way down here. I just added some little screws in uh, to the sides of the uh, glasses here. Just gonna rotate that one a bit and go to side view, G and X, sorry, G and Y. And then I hit Shift D and Z. Wanted to go in front mode and rotate it that one as well. And then I just selected both of the screws and hit Control J and then right click to set origin to geometry. Scrolled out a bit and added a mirror modifier to the screws. And then using this eyedropper tool, I just selected the uh, circle here or our glasses, I guess we can rename this to glasses. We can name these to screws. Oh, I just did that the wrong way. So screws and glasses. And now you should have uh, the screws on both sides of your glasses. And of course you'd want to give them a texture um, and we could just, for the sake of this tutorial, we could just give them this um, this silver texture here that we already have. I mean, of course you could change that if you really wanted to, um, but I'm gonna leave it here for the tutorial. And just one last note, um, if you're gonna be using this in a project or animation or something, just select those uh, the screws and then holding down shift, select your main mesh, the glasses and hit control P and just parent that to the object. Um, so that way, if you move the glasses, um, and it's always it's important to note you could uh, hit Shift A as well, and you could add in an empty under mesh or where is the uh, empty down here empty. You could add in a you know a lot of people do the plane axis or the circle. I'll just do the plane axis. Um, scale that down a good bit there, 
and then you could always just right click and snap the selection to the cursor or I'm sorry set origin to geometry and then right click and snap the selection to the cursor so that way it's right on point with this uh, empty here and then you could just holding down shift select the empty control P parent the object and now this uh, empty will control your glasses and the screws which are parented to the glasses so all right guys i hope this tutorial was helpful give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial thanks for watching